female. When she has cubs, they're ranked right beneath her. And as they grow up, their cubs are ranked beneath them, and so on. Daughters usually remain in their birth plan for life and build close relationships with their mothers and sisters. One grouping of mothers and daughters is their Group, often join together, creating one massive clan. These ten groups are organized within the clan by the dominance level of their oldest female. But unfortunately for males, their place is always at the bottom. The life of a male hyena may start out okay, but he's going to high to get get a high rate of female. But this is short lived. Males are only allowed to stay with their families for around two to three years. After that, they leave the clan they're born into and beg for admittance into a new one. If accepted in a clan, they are not going to catch him. He's in. special teams coaches they just want to keep it away from him because that's what he can do and others have egos that their players can't keep up with and they say challenge him kick it to him the way he runs as fast as he is i wouldn't challenge him at all i'd do everything possible to keep it away he is just a blur when he gets a full head of steam and he got a full head of steam there and now a two-point conversion attempt forthcoming Jackson looking to throw right away. And no, it falls incomplete. So the two-point conversion, no good. If we had a dollar for every time we heard a team talk about explosive plays and how valuable they are, we probably wouldn't have to work very much. And we just saw a big one there. And then they tried to go explosive again, going for two. Yeah, is that a little too risky, you think? Just kick the extra point? And you know, I'm all about getting points. And if I feel good about my kicker, I go ahead and do that. But with that ball at the two-yard line, going for two I think it's awfully tempting for teams nowadays so out come the Bucks now for their first drive and they'll be led out by an exciting athlete fourth overall pick of the draft out of Florida Anthony Richardson we're seeing it more and more in this league how teams love to have athletes back there taking the snaps guys who can throw it and move around and get yards with their legs if needed he's one of the best examples that we see out there right now he can throw for hundreds of yards one week and then run for 100 plus the next. He adds an extra dimension that really confounds defenses when he puts it all together. A gain of three, second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. That's good for a Buccaneer first to pick up of 12 yards. Richardson off the play fake. Oh, his first throw of the game. Going to be intercepted. Picked off by Dante Winder. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. Time will tell if that's an interception that rattles the rookie here. First drive on the road. And you know the discussion going into the game? Centered on, okay, let's get out nice and easy. Take care of the football. We're on the road. You're a youngster. Let's not make mistakes early. But now the conversation will shift to, okay, put it behind you. Move on. Long way to go in this one. So now you've got their offense coming out for the first time with great initial field position. And bringing them out is one of the most exciting players in the NFL every season. A former MVP, it's Lamar Jackson. Early part of his career, defense has really had to focus on his running ability, and they still do. But now, he's turned himself into a true dual-threat quarterback. When he plants his cleats in the ground and turns it loose, good things happen downfield. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. That's caught. Touchdown. DK Metcalf, 31 yards. And his guys are going to add. The fade route, that seems to be becoming more and more popular in the NFL. What makes it a success? When you have an athletic, acrobatic receiver, 
who knows how to go up and get the football. All you're asking your quarterback to do is put it up there where he can get it and no one else. Very difficult to defend. Now the offense will stay out there. They're going to line up and try for two. Jackson here, he's going to look to throw. That is caught. He's got it. And the lead will move to 14 to nothing. So their second touchdown of this first half, they went for two after score number one, didn't get it. Now they get the equalizer, so to speak. So to speak, and you can understand the thinking. Because they didn't get it after the first score, they wanted to get back to a normal points pattern, get up to 14. But just think if they missed it here, only up 12 to nothing. One extra point on the other side could ultimately beat you if they score twice. And able to get this out to the 25. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. And they're in an early hole. The first drive, they threw the interception. That led to a touchdown. So, decent-sized deficit early on. It is, but I think you hit the key words, early on. So, they have to decide, do we even need to change game plan? Or do we just need to execute better? There he goes, right side. Inside the 20. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. A great play there. 75 yards. And the Bucs are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. Extra point from McManus is good. And that'll make our score 14 to 7. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. Back onto the field comes this offense, ready for their second drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out, looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Jackson going for Metcalf on the deep ball. That's caught inside the 20. Touchdown. DK Metcalf. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And his guys get the quick strike touchdown. Boy, still in the first quarter, and look out. I mean, they are on pace for over 80 points in this game. I don't know that they'll get their CD, but this has been impressive to watch so far. That certainly would be history in the making, wouldn't it, partner? I'm glad we're here to actually watch and see if it actually happens, although, like you, I have my doubts, but they are firmly in control of this game. Here we go now as they will again try for two. They'll try and throw for it. And he's got it. So the try for two successful. And that bumps their lead up even further. And of course, on the two-point try, had the option to run or pass. They pass it there, and it works. Felt pretty straightforward, didn't it? An open receiver. Ball's put on him. Two points for them. After the touchdown, here's Groupie to kick this one away. job there on special teams to limit him to inside the 15 as he's dropped at the 14. For most people, the excitement of a kickoff return is to see a long one that goes back in the opposite direction. But for the guys covering it, it's being able to stop them deep in their own territory. How about that incredible form tackle right there? Shoulder in the ball carrier, and down he goes. First and 10, Richardson looks to throw it. And that would off the mark behind him, incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Got his man, that's Luke Musgrave. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. A big pick up there, 18 yards and a Buccaneer first. Now 
parachutes in. The connection here with Nelson Aguilar. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk at a 45. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. An entertaining start to this one. More to come on EA Sports. Second quarter now, and it's Buccaneer football. As they've got it with a first and ten. Richardson. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice game there. This one goes for 20. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and ten. As they've got things rolling on this drive. Again, it's Richardson. Here's Mitchell with a catch out of the backfield. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. Up the middle they go. Done. And he'll snag about five yards down to the 32. I think we all suspected that they were going back to him after he found the end zone on his last carry. And they kept the positive momentum going there. Another nice run by him. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Seventh play of the drive, forthcoming on third and eight. Richardson looking to throw. That's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline. But out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. The kick by McManus is good. And they're hanging around here as the lead's down to 12. Maybe a little fortunate there. That was leaking a little, maybe leaking a lot, but he got it. Yeah, he actually was able to make it work. How about the body language, though, right? As he watched that ball leak to the right, trying to try to bring it back in. And had just enough to get it done. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Get a look at DK Metcalf as this offense returns to the field. He has certainly made the most of his catches so far, both of them going for touchdowns here in half number one. And we've never met a team that doesn't talk about getting off to a fast start and featuring guys that they want to have the ball early. We're seeing both of those come into play here. Off to an incredible start, got their feature guy going, and now everyone else should have opportunities. Calling no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Once again, it's Jacobs. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. They go play action with Jackson. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Normally on third down and short yardage, you're thinking of throwing your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. But this time they let him roam down the field, and a nice dart picks up the first down and then some. Here's Jacobs on first and ten. And a good job of finding the open space to run as he's down close to the 30 here. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and ten. Jacobs going to try the middle. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Final play of the half here. It's Jackson. And this 
will be incomplete. One second left to go. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. Now Jackson, a final shot before break. Oh, it's intercepted. He was trying to get it to Ridley. Picked by Kevin Byer, and he will be brought down on what will be the final play of this first half. First half in the books. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. All right, Brandon, back to you. Due to time constraints, we move you forward in today's broadcast to the beginning of the third quarter. And we welcome you back live now inside the booth alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, set and ready to rock for the third quarter. This taken in at the goal line. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start in the third quarter. In well, the first half, they struggled a little bit to keep pace offensively, CD, down two scores here. So how do they make some changes coming out of the locker room? Well, they've studied what they did in the first half. They've seen what the defense is throwing at them. Now they want to have a plan of attack against it. So you come out, you're not going to get all the points back on one drive. But get started on it. Start chopping into that lead, and maybe it'll inspire your defense to help out as well. Richardson now on second down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you're definitely going to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now it's Richardson. He finds his man complete. That's done. And he's able to get up here to the 26. That'll bring up fourth down. They wind up getting eight yards, but they needed more than that. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. This is taken at the 23. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. A good return there, 17 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. Get a look at DK Metcalf as this offense returns to the field. Not a bad day at the office there. Maybe he would like the catch number to go up a little bit, but I think most guys would say two catches, two touchdowns. Eh, that's okay. I think if the catch number goes up, we start talking about the record books because at that pace, this type of efficiency, oh, yeah, I think I throw it to him a little bit more often. Second and five. They'll stay on the ground with Jacobs. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. Now third down and seven. Off the play fake. Here's Jackson. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. This could be a first down. Thought they were going to force a fourth down. Instead, P.I. gives him the first. And that's frustrating because you think you've taken them really deep into the count, haven't you? Instead, you've got to start all over. That can really, really be demoralizing. And now off to the races down the right side. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. The 71 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. He showed his shiftiness and his explosion to take him all the way down near the goal line. Love that description, and it creates momentum. Maybe you hand it to him again since he's got it going, or do you fake it to him and throw it to a teammate? Right now, the options are wide open. Here's Jacobs. And he is into the end zone for a touchdown. Josh Jacobs. Touchdown run. And his guys find a way to stretch that lead. But this offensive line has really stepped up to the challenge here because those mascots, they've been sensational clearing holes all game long. And this is great work down here near the goal line to give their back the space he needs to work his way into the end zone. That's caught. And this is going to be caught. It's good. And that extends their lead by two more. 
After the touchdown, here's Groupie to kick this one away. Taking it about the one. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. Now the Buccaneers offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly, because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Richardson looking to throw this. And his throw is incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. Quez Watkins, the intended target. And now it's second down. Here's Richardson to throw. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. That time defensively looked like they showed quite a bit of pressure, but backed off, and it proved fruitful. They get the pick. He went through all of his rules about getting rid of the ball quickly because he read blitz. He saw all those people stacked at the line of scrimmage, and then they fooled him by dropping into coverage. Now he's ready to get rid of the ball fast, but guess what? Too many defenders out there, exactly as you described, an interception. Running straight ahead is Jacobs. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch in. Back now in Miami. As we are set to bring you the home stretch here, the fourth quarter. Second down, Jacobs once more. Seven yards on the carry, make it third and four coming up. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Call it a gain of a yard, and that'll bring up fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it. Touchdown! Calvin Ridley, 28 yards. And his guys are going to add on to their lead. Uh, when coaches come into a game preaching total team effort, CD, I think this is the type of ball game that they're dreaming of. It was pretty apparent early on that they were clicking in all three phases. It's, it's been fun to watch. Yeah, sometimes in the NFL, you end up with matchups like we've been watching here. And when you go back to the early drives, you can just see that one squad was on a different level in this game. Safe to say, we have been disappointed in watching their execution throughout this contest. They'll look to throw. And this is going to be caught. So add two more to the lead as they continue to pour it on here in the fourth. <laughs> I think this is just going to be a function of the times we live in now. Very similar to the bat flip in baseball. Everyone's got to start to get comfortable with this. But to me, this is just rubbing it in. You got a big lead. Go ahead and take the extra point. One thing to keep in mind, though, karma's still out there. And sometimes it has a way of catching up with you. After the touchdown, here's Karupi to kick this one away. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. Now a second and six. Drop 50, drop 50. There, Richardson, back to throw it. 
And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. Certainly not what he was hoping for, Charles. That's now three interceptions in this ball game. But there's a lot of knowledge to be gleaned every time you throw an interception if you do things the right way. And hasn't there been a pretty darn good quarterback along the way who threw a lot of interceptions early, learned from them, and became great later? Who would that be? That'd be one Peyton Manning through 28 his rookie year. That's the NFL record. How things turn out for him? I think okay. He's a guy in all the commercials now, right? <laughs> yeah, I think he's doing okay. On the handoff, this is Jacobs. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. 88 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. Here now, second and four. Here's a handoff to Jacobs. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. Now they'll have it first and goal following that gain of 17. Hate to be blunt, but it is just continuing to prove to be the case that this O-line is manhandling this D-line right now. They deserve to roll up their sleeves and show up their biceps because they're doing exactly what you just described, manhandling the defensive front. They've got the leverage, they're powering through, and they're controlling this game. Well, you got to think, Charles, that one's on the quarterback because everybody was up at the line of scrimmage. He just didn't call for the snap in time. Yeah, I think he needs a little bit better awareness out there because you got to know when the clock's in single digits and either snap it or get a timeout call if you have one. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. Jacobs now. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. Sometimes you get a first and goal and you're back near the seven, eight, nine yard line and you start thinking, maybe we're running here on first down to get half of what we need so maybe we can have two or three shots at going for it from closer range. So this is a bonus right here. What a great run to work his way into the end zone. And now, once again, they'll line up to go for two. Now Jackson. And this is going to be intercepted. Well, as most teams do in their two-point attempt, they pass the ball. Instead, it gets intercepted. And remember, if you pick it off, you got a chance to take it all the way back at two points yourself, right? Yeah, not the case there, but that's why you got to be really careful with those throws, especially to the outside. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds. They've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Back to throw, here's Richardson. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. And they'll take over inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. Well, they've got the huge lead. Now they have another interception on the defensive side. Seems like everything they touch in this one, Charles, turns to gold. And they have to be awfully happy right there to get what appears to be one more for the road and help seal away one of their best efforts of the season. Here's Jacobs. And he's dropped right at the 40. Game of three. 
Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And he'll bring this one inside the 35. It'll go as a gain of seven on the play, and it sets up a third and inches situation. And what are the whistles for? Timeout. So they'll stop the clock here in a game that's been decided in the closing seconds. DC, ready? Play action. Now Jackson. He'll take a shot for the end zone. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. Zone coverage there and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there and it winds up incomplete. They're going on fourth down. It's Jackson. And it's incomplete. They're still throwing to the very end. But now this game is over. So celebration down on the field for a good, hard-fought victory here. And it was a game where they were off and running in the first quarter, Charles, and never looked back. You know, partner, after a while, we always say the same thing, don't we? They set the tone early, right? They started fast. So I asked a few of my horse racing friends, do you have a term for me that we can use to cover that? And they said, yeah. When a horse breaks out like that, you say he caught a flyer out of the gate. And that's exactly what this team did today. I mean, they jumped out there, jumped on them, and were never headed. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. And with that, we sign off from Miami.